one thing Magic really would have loved would have been to win the lag, give himself a chance to get a bit of a head start on his That's illustrious right. opponent, but it has gone the way of the German. Remember, it's still race to 11. And the winner will play Karol Skowerski or Alexa Pesels in the quarterfinals. Well, it looks like the pink four is going to move out of the way, so this is going to work out for the young German. 24 years of age. He's already won the World Championship and the US Open, and just a couple of weeks ago came through such a strong field to take the World Masters title in Gibraltar. Maybe play for the three in the opposite corner. Yeah, that's what he's tried. And he's got a nice angle as well, so what a chance for the first rack. Nice opening rack here for Josh. This is what you don't want from Josh to get off to a flying start. He's such a good front runner. Jason, what is it that makes Joshua Filler so good? What are his strengths when you watch him? He just keeps running out from everywhere. Um, no, I, I think, um, you know, he's still young. And uh, he's playing just, you know, like he just doesn't care. That's what it looks like. Pretty much interview there that we heard with Imran Majid. I was impressed with what he said. But he has to see Joshua Filler as just another player with a pool stick in his hand. Now, we know, Jason, that is not the case. But that's the mindset he's got to take, to not be frightened at all by the reputation of his opponent. Yeah, I think um, if you're playing, it doesn't matter who you're playing at this stage. If, you, if you're if you in the event and you're playing well, you, you're not worried about your opponent. You're just trying to focus on yourself. So, yeah, I think that's a good um, comment from Imran. And he's, he seems like he's focused and playing pretty well. So... So hopefully we can see Imran get to the table and maybe string a few racks together. Extension, but for now, looks like Joss is going to get the, the first rack on the board. One of the key factors in determining what sort of chance Majid might have of pulling off an upset here will be how soon he can actually get to the table. We've seen a number of matches this week. With a clear pre-match favourite has just run out into a big lead. And by the time the underdog wins the rock. has even got to the table, he's already chasing a big deficit. So Joshua Filler, break and run from the opening rack, and he leads 1-0. Oliver Shonoki off to a good start, leading Skylar Woodward 2-0. And Alexa Peselj of Serbia, 3-1 up on Karol Skowerski of Poland. That's been Joshua Filler's route through, came through on the winner's side. Just the one whitewash so far. That was his opening match against Robert Hart and David Zalman of the Czech Republic. Chris Reinhold, who had actually knocked out Filler's wife, Pia, in a close finish in the previous round, was dispatched by nine racks to five. Very accomplished performance against Shane Wolford. A 9-1 win over the American. And then, as I was saying, saw off Luke Rollison to claim his place in the single elimination stage. Nice draw, that is. I would have liked to have had a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some players do make it through with ease. And then some have to battle hard. You've been there, Jason. You've yeah. had easy draws and yeah, tough you draws. Yeah, can, you can only beat what's in front of you. And when we say easy, we don't mean he's right had too. an easy draw. You're we just mean he's not played one of the big one boys. Right yeah, and it's all relative, isn't it? He's beaten some accomplished players along the way. And he leads 1-0. Stride break of the game. Yeah, it goes without saying, we're going to see more dry breaks now. Now we're in the last 16. Bye bye, template. The triangle is here. So explain why that is, Carl. I'm going to let Jason, seeing as he's a player and he's actually a rack expert, Michael. He's very good with a rack. He knows all about the gaps and stuff. So, Jason, take it away. No, I just obviously, if you've been watching. 
um, the whole week and you've seen with the template, it's pretty easy to make the wing ball. There's not much skill to it. Um, but with this break now, you, you're not too sure if you're going to make one or not. So you got to hit it a little bit harder and you got to rely on a little bit of luck more from the break. And that's what Carl said. You'll see a little bit more play in these few matches today. Yeah, because with the template, the referees can get every single ball touching. With the triangle, you're not quite guaranteed all the balls to be touching, so sometimes the wing ball won't fly in the corner because of that. So it's a little bit more random, Michael, when you're using a triangle, but what it does cause is you see a little bit more about the game. You see more safeties, more kicking, just like we're about to see now. Extension, please. Imran Majid has had a long route to get here. Lost his second match on the winner's side against Jeff Beckley. And then had to come through seven rounds on the one-loss side of the draw. Almost went out. Against Marco Teutcher of the Netherlands in the fifth of those. Came through in a hill-hill finish. 9-8. Ball stroke. Ball in Yeah, I'm not too sure if that shot from Filler uh, when he Stop played the one, he either intended to make it or not. So if not, it was a good safety. He's now got ball in hand. The four ball looks a little bit difficult here, Carl. Yeah, that's what pool player looks for when we're, when we're seeing the layout of the table. Joshua will know this. The eight ball isn't too bad for a combination, but you'd want to get fairly straight on this pink four, so we'll see what. The Masters champion decides to do. Two thousand and eighteen was his world championship winning year. The way he was playing, he was strongly fancied to win again this year. As he found his way through the draw in Milton Keynes. And in the quarterfinals he was 4-0 up against the reigning champion Alban Ocean. But ended up losing 11-6. Very nicely struck there. Doesn't want to be straight here, wants a little angle so he can come off the rail just before the side. to think of anyone in the game more lethal more effective more clinical from situations like this he misses balls like everyone does but misses very little that you don't expect him to See Josh leaving a big angle on this eight. Playing this with right hand spin, going three, maybe four rails. There's not much future in giving Joshua Filler ball in hand. And he's run out very clinically from there. Joshua Filler swiftly into a 2 0 lead over Imran Majid. As such a feature of any big match he plays is his wife, Pia, looking on. She, of course, participated in the tournament. And she's now alongside Michael Bridge. Thanks, Michael. Yep, paid my ticket. Got one of the best seats in the house. I'm delighted to say Joshua's wife, Pia, is with me. Joshua is playing phenomenal this week. Yeah, not just this week. Like I feel like the last tournament is doing really good like the whole year. And, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to see him play that good because he's really working hard for it. Now, for those that don't know, you nearly played your husband in this tournament. Explain. Yeah, but luckily I didn't because I know I ain't no chance against this guy. He's just too good and, um, yeah. <laughs> 
clearly Joshua is playing the best Paul of his life now. Do you, would you agree with that? Um, or is there more? There's more. I think there's always more. Like you can never like be perfect, so there's always stuff to work on. But yeah, he's doing pretty good. But someone beats him this week. They have to be ultra special to take that title off him. Well, yeah, today it's a little bit different because the balls are hand wrecked now, so the table is breaking different. And um, well, it can go either way. Absolutely. Well, so far Joshua is in control. But it's early days. Back to you, Michael. What do you think of that point, Jason? You think back to those wonderful few months that Filler had when he won the World Championship and the US Open just over three years ago. Was he playing better then than he is now? Um, not really too sure. He's always playing good. So it's kind of hard to, to judge. You very rarely see him play bad. You know, I think maybe if he loses a match here or there, he might not be breaking well, but you very rarely see him miss many balls. Um, but yeah, you could, I don't know, it's a tough one. You know, he's been winning tournaments every year, so it's not like he just won one year and doesn't win anything else. He's, he's won a bunch of tournaments all the way up from 2018 right up to now. And when you do see him fail to win tournaments, Carl, and get beaten, it tends to be a very good player playing quite well to knock him out. Yeah, he's not going to hand you the match, that's the thing. A little bit like Jason, you know, he's another one that comes under that bracket. If you're going to beat him, you've got to go out there and do it. That's what Imran's got to do, because Joshua's not... He's not going to miss balls where they're all sat in the open. It's You know, that's one of his strengths. The one weakness, if, if you could call it, would maybe be his break shot. Doesn't possess great power, does he? Yeah, maybe if I if I was saying it, I don't think he's breakers. I think he probably thinks himself that some tactical sides of the game that maybe he could work a little bit harder on. I think he was saying something like that in his interview um, after the Masters that he was still was um, trying to work on some safety play and a little bit of tactical play. So. He obviously sees some uh, room for improvement in that department. This is the big thing now when you're jumping over the ball. He's guaranteed to jump over and hit it. If you don't pot it, it's all about where it ends up. Now, there is a lot of balls on the table, so you know he doesn't have to leave Imran a shot because there's so many balls on the table. But it does look like this goes. Maybe tight. We'll get another look in a minute. Yeah, you could see there. It wasn't far away, was it? Well, we can't see the potted angle, so... Joshua got away with one there, but has Imran played a good safety again? Has he got him behind the nine? I think he's left the window. I think he's a little short on that one. I think Josh is going to be able to chip the one up to the top rail and try and leave the cue ball around behind the six. The safety part of nine ball pool is often overlooked and the first four days we've not really seen much of it. That's purely down to the balls flying in, but as we've seen here, when if you only pop one ball and off the break, there's more balls for safeties and kick shots. So it's actually a better version of pool that you you're gonna be watching. Imran Majid, it's been on the scene for so long. He's actually going to be 50 later this year. But it's been frustrating for him so far. Every time he's come to the table, it's felt like he's just been trying to solve a conundrum. Nothing much to go at yet. Try and put this moon ball in the bottom left corner. Draw the cue ball off the side rail. Playing for the two ball on the top left. He might try and come back for the side pocket. Good shot there from Josh. Yeah, made it look very easy that shot, but whenever the cue ball and the object ball is close together and you can't see the pocket in your eye line, they can be awkward. Needs an angle. If he's straight, he can just stop the cue ball there. If he chooses to. I think 
he's just a little bit off straight car. I think he's going to have to pot this ball, take his medicine and leave himself a tough cut on the four ball. Yeah, that's the type of shot Josh is so good at. It's not a case of just potting the ball. It's the way it goes in the pocket. It just always seems to go in the middle. So that tells you that he's just so confident queuing the ball. Well, he just backs himself for everything, doesn't he? He believes if the shot is there to be played, he's going to take it on. Yeah, that was a great shot. I think he's landed in a little bit of an awkward position here in the 50-yard line, maybe. Let's see him cut this ball on the side. Extension call. Very nice shot there. The table seems to be bouncing a little bit more than normal here. Yeah, the better the tables have been recloth. The rails haven't. That's the thing with this game, people often don't realise how fast them tables really are. That can make you feel a little bit jittery out there, can't it? If you if you know that the rails are quite responsive. Skyler Woodward wins the rack. Well, Imran Majid can't get a look in at the moment. And in this race to 11 in the last 16 of the UK Open, Joshua Filler is off to a flyer. He leads 3-0. If you want to make it, then you can take it, but you better get in the zone. 
Welcome back to the last 16 here at the Copper Box Arena in the UK Open. And here in the UK, lots of talk about Jubilee Weekend coming up. And one of the big sporting attractions of those few days will be some Super League action between Warrington and Leeds. So if you're a fan of the 13-a-side game, Friday the 3rd of June is the date to mark in your diary for that one. 7.30 on Sky Sports Arena. Thank you, Rack 4. And out in the centre of this arena Joshua at the Phillip moment, Joshua three, Filler, very much in control. He leads Imran Majid, 3-0. See, Josh has changed his break. Everybody's been breaking from the rail. Josh has moved his cue ball in a little bit, and now it seems like the wing ball's flying in. Yeah, that was a good break, that. He controlled the cue ball well. It looked like it had quite a lot of power, so maybe I'll take that statement back before with the break. Maybe he heard you. <laughs> Imran Majid perhaps getting that sinking feeling again. But it has gone up to race to 11 now, so still time to turn it round. And whoever does come through, it looks increasingly likely, although far from certain yet, that they'll play Alexa Paselj. He'll be representing Serbia at the World Cup of Pool in a few weeks' time. He currently leads Poland's veteran Karol Skowerski by five ranks to three. Yeah, I can't see Josh missing from here. Looks like it's going to be 4-0. Yeah, this is where Filler is just so good. Cue ball control is always good enough. And as we've said, he doesn't really miss silly balls. If you were watching our coverage of the Moscone Cup just before Christmas at Alexandra Palace, you'll remember that Filler was the man who delivered the winning point for Europe. Second time he's done that. And Jason, you know what that feeling is like. Yeah, um, I could have made it my third time, but Skylar got me. Didn't you have a miscue in that match when you yeah. had a chance to clinch the winning point? You were 2-0 up, I think, and then I think a miscue out of nowhere. I think I was 2-1 up and a miscue, and then after that, Skylar played good, and um, I didn't really do too much wrong after that. But yeah, it would have been nice to win the final point, but... It's a team game, and um, I wasn't really too bothered after it. I just wanted to win. <laughs> and you did get MVP again, so you can't have everything. Yeah, you can't have everything. Extension, um, That's just the way life is. Listen, Michael, what, what you forget about them miscues. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Starting to move through the gears now. He had a break and run in the opening rack. And he's had another one now in rack four. Joshua Filler still in total control here. He leads Imran Majid, the sole surviving home player, 4-0. Now, there's been a lot of talk about a potential All-American quarterfinal here between Shane Van Boning and Skylar Woodward. Well, Oliver Shalnocki is doing his best to spoil the party. The rising young star from Hungary, a World Championship semi-finalist last year, is leading by four racks to one against Woodward on table two. This is some of what we've got coming up, and indeed some of what we've already seen. Shane Van Boning finally landing that World Pool Championship title. Hard to believe that was only last month in Milton Keynes. So much has happened since then, not least Joshua Filler winning the World Pool Masters in Gibraltar. World Cup coming up in Brentwood in a few weeks' time. The US Open, Carlo Beato defending there. And of course, it all leads towards the Moscone Cup. The European Open appearing on the schedule for the first time this year as well. There is Oliver Shonoki. Moving into that strong position against Skylar Woodward. And that's, I believe, to take it to 5-1. Potential winner of the title for you, Carl? Mm, good question, I'm not so sure. I mean, he's always there and thereabouts, you know, if you keep knocking, but I'm kind of focusing on the, the top two names that we just seen on the TV graphic there, SVB and Filler, they're in separate halves as well. Well, we got our dream final at the World Championship when Van Boning played Ocean. 
I think a clash with filler would fall into that category as well. Don't know why he's so disappointed here. He's absolutely perfect. Drag this in the side, leave an angle on the four, cut it onto the six, and it's perfect. Don't know why he's not happy about this, Carl. It doesn't seem very difficult, does it? Extension, please. No, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe he's got more angle than, than we're thinking. He's, and we you, just drag this in. Maybe he's just worried that the four, but well, no, I don't know what he's worried about, and were you? He's okay here. He can play it into the six, he can play it, he can even play it into the rail if he wanted. He's got a big angle, so he should be good here. Well, that's what he was worried about, wasn't he? But he could have played it into the rail. That would have just swung the four off a little bit. Well, why wouldn't you play it with the other spin? I would have played it with outside instead of inside. Yeah, and hold the cue ball. Yes, above the nine. It was a very strange shot. Is the bank shot on? If not, he might be ducking, playing safe. Putting the cue ball up towards the seven on the top rail. He's over at the four though. He needs this four to slow down. It's gone wrong. Well, you just spoke about the safety game being not too good at Joshua Fuller, and that was a shocker. Yeah, I'm only going off of what he said in the last event. He said he maybe he could work on his safety game a little bit more, and maybe that's something they have been working on. So he knows that, and uh, I'm sure he'll be disappointed with that shot. We're queuing from off the rail and a bit of work to do to secure position. Not the sort of shot you want to face when you've been basically frozen out for the whole match so far. Yeah, Imran Majid's probably the only player in the event who wears one of them magnetic chalk holders on his, on his trousers, usually. Well, people who are not so good wear them. <laughs> Mika uses one too. Needs this to slow down. Needs it to slow down. That's a tricky little shot. Especially when you've not had a shot for four games. Might just be able to pick out Abdullah Al Yusuf in the background there. Looking on. World Championship semi finalist last month. Big shot here from him now. Go twice across, maybe. Yeah, good shot there. Got a little tester off the rail now, though, for his first rack. He's only landed over there because he's overcut the seven. I think he would have been a little bit better on the nine. He's just got to commit to this. Stay down. You're unlikely to get many chances when you play Joshua Filler. When you do get them, you've got to take full advantage. And although he made hard work of it, Imran Majid has now delivered and is off the mark here. He trails 4-1. Alexa tell you, Alexa Pesselj of Serbia, now 6-3 up against Karol Skowerski. And remember, the winner of that plays the winner of this. That's what we've got today. We've seen Francisco Sanchez Ruiz already through on the main table. Batting all the way through to the quarterfinals now, having been beaten in his first match early on in the week and been 6 0 down in the first match he had to play then on the loser side. Good win for Mario He over Noyuki Oi. He left out of the Austrian World Cup team, an event he's had so much success in in the past. But he's flying the flag for Austria now. And down the bottom, David Alcady, comprehensive win over Sanyam Pelovanovic. Alcady, of course, will be playing at that World Cup in partnership with FSR for Spain. Oliver Shonoki, I can update that for you now, actually. Woodward has got one back, so that's 5-2. And I told you about Pesselj and Skowerski. 
So our first look at the break of Imran Majid. He's got a shot on the one ball. Yeah, the wing ball, Jod. Nice little flick from the six, and uh, I'm not sure if the five ball goes past the eight. Might be a little tricky. It's not too bad, the three balls down here, so he can use the three to get over the other side for the five ball. Yeah, and the mistake did come from Filler, so in that last rack, he had a good chance. The balls were all sat nice, so this will just send a little message. And that's hugely important, isn't it? He's got to show Filler, if you do make mistakes, if you do slip up, I will punish you. If he passes up opportunities that are given to him, that enables Filler to play with a lot less pressure. Been a regular winner of tournaments, not at this level, but it's won quite a few GB9 events, Imran Majid. And he was the first British player ever to win a tournament on the Euro Tour. Back in 2006 in Italy, won another one in the Netherlands the following year. He's been in five more finals since, but lost them all. Yeah, you could see where he just nudged the eight ball. He was trying to nudge the eight ball when he played the combo to free up this five. Might have worked out okay because he's nudged it into a combination. He's not too bad to you. He's going to pot the five ball here and go just before the side pocket and back across to the other side of the table for the six in the top left. Do you go two rails, Carl, just before the side, right there where he's pointing his cue, or do you try and come up and shoot the six into the top right? I think going before the side. Yeah, Extension I think you're right. I think he's got to go where he ran pointed his cue, because I think this is a bit thinner than what we think. You see there in between him, friend's cue, he has a little extension. What, in the middle part of the queue? Yes, in the middle part of his queue, right in the middle you'll see it. Just as the joint, you'll see it just as it goes up, it attaches another little piece to it. Which makes the queue longer instead of having the extension on the back of the queue. Looking good here to get yourself another rack on the board, Michael. Well, he never got an opening in the early racks, but he has had chances in the last two. And as you say, Carl, he's sending a message here. Yeah, he's just lost the cue ball a little bit there. I'm sure he's going to be fine, but you'd want to be straight on the nine. It was his first breaking rack and of Ronald the match, the and rack. he's run out from it. He was 4-0 down, but he's half that deficit. Filler's lead, now 
If you want to make it, then you can take it, but you better get in the zone. World-class pool action all weekend at the Copper Box Arena in London. Right to see an enthusiastic crowd turning out in the capital of the UK for this UK Open. While we're watching Joshua Filler, the former world champion, 4-0 up against Imran Majid not so long ago. But the one remaining British player in the draw has pulled a couple back. He ran out from his break in rack six. He'll start us off again in the seventh. Let's see how close the wing ball goes here. It chawed the last time, and he hit it pretty hard, so he'll be looking to try and repeat the same break, but see the three ball disappear this time. Dry break from Imran. Yeah, it is a dry break, but this is, this is nice to see in the sense of Phil has got work to do, hasn't he? It's not a road map. That's what we say when all the balls are just sat over the pocket. So he's, he's got a bit of work to do here. There's a bit of a cluster down there. And he's got to make a good shot here to get started. That's the strength of Joshua though. Just gets down there, jacked up and fires it in. And a very consistent year for him so far. We mentioned his World Master success in Gibraltar just a couple of weeks ago. He also won the Treviso Open. Well-established event just before that, beating his Moscone Cup teammate, Eklund Kachi of Albania, in the final. Also took gold in one of the divisions at the European Pool Championship in Antalya. and was runner-up in the nine-ball division of the Derby City Classic to Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, also runner-up in the Premier League. Yeah, he had to draw back off the seven there. Now, can he pot this ball and avoid the scratch in the side? Skyler Woodward pulls another rack back. It's now 5-4, he trails Sean Nocky. He's back in that match. Yeah, he was 5-1 down. Woodward with the incentive of a possible quarter-final match-up with Shane Van Boning. The two Americans left in the draw. You would have liked that six ball to just come off the rail a little bit. But still fancy him to pot this. Extension, please. Yeah, but Jay, that overhead just tells you how much more difficult this shot is than the previous yep. angle, doesn't it? I think you're going to see him go high here and come up past the side pocket and back across. And he's made it with the ease. Needs to miss the eight. Was playing for the eight in the same pocket as the six. He's okay though, he's nudged it okay. You can just pop this in the side and run the cue ball round the table for choice of bottom corners. So once Majid had control of the table, he really wanted to hold on to it as long as he could, but his momentum was halted by a dry break, and he was sat Definitely down for the rest of the back. rack. Filler, three clear again at 5-2. Now, we're going to hear from Niels Fyne in a moment, but first of all, I can tell you Alexa Peselge is now 7-4 in front against Karol Skowerski, keeping a very close eye on that. First to 11 there, we'll play first to 11 in this one. Now let's hear from Niels Fyne ahead of his match against Daniel Masiol. He's with Michael. Yes, thank you very much, Michael. Yes, I am with one of the GOATs, Niels Fyne. Niels, what a great tournament this has been so far. Yeah, man, enjoying it. And uh, final 16, that was goal number one. And uh, let's see what we can do from here. How much have you enjoyed this week? Well, a lot. I mean, uh, yesterday was a big win. I was down 5 nothing against uh, Wojciech Cevcek, reigning world temple champion. Uh, turn it around, one nine six. So that's a nice confidence booster and now uh, a fresh start. And someone who's so 
a big regular on the Matchroom Pool Series. How good is it to see another tournament on our calendar? Oh, that's great. I mean, there's another one even after this, the European Open. So there's two uh, majors added this year. That's, uh, that's a big plus, and uh, I'm just happy to be part of it again. Neil, we wish you the very best of luck. It's always good to see Cheers, you. Cheers, man. See Cheers. you later. Yeah, he's playing really nicely this year. And you, if he can come through that Josh match, he'll play Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, racks. who ended the hopes of Dennis Orcolio earlier today. 5-2 to filler. Nice cue ball control there. Breaking with his hand off the slate bed. Seems to be working very nice, but it's good that he spotted that so early on as well. Well... Like you said, I'm a rack mechanic or something like that. Is that what you said? No, so breaking from the side rail, the wing ball's just going that little bit low and it's not going in. So when that's happening, you've got to come towards the middle of the table. And if it's going high, you go more towards the rail. Well, we said you was a rack expert, so well, you heard it first. So hopefully Imran's been paying attention. I was actually thinking about leaving here and going down and telling him, Ren. I'm <laughs> just joking. Um, yeah, hopefully he's, he noticed it, but Josh noticed it really quickly. I think it was the second wreck. He already changed his brick. Josh is the type of player when when the balls Extension, are like this please. and he doesn't get out like that that rack before where he messed that combo up, it really gets to him. So you want to make sure he does a job here and tries and gets a bigger lead. I don't see what what the problem is here. I think maybe he's putting himself in danger by doing this. We saw that a couple of racks ago, didn't we, where he almost talked himself out of it and gave Madge that window of opportunity. Sometimes you can be too much of a perfectionist. He's got to get the cue ball soft. He's under it, yet. so I, I sort of agree with you, Jay. Maybe he's trying to overcomplicate things, and but he was worried about it, and, and it's caused a mistake again, hasn't it, from positional play anyway? I just don't understand it. Though he looks like he's flying and everything's going smooth and then those two racks just seem to like slow him down for some reason very nice shot doesn't want to kiss the nine half ball and he I think he might be able to get this with a little bit of spin it's funny though is it when, when you fall out of position now you know, silly little things like this happen. Yeah, I don't think this is as hard as it is. Or hard as it looks. It's going to be his third run out from the break already in this match. It's a game of fractions. Joshua Filler wins the right. Well, here's a fraction, a half. And Joshua Filler is slightly past that stage now in his pursuit of those 11 racks he needs to go through. He was four clear at 4-0. He's restored that advantage now at six racks to two. Skylar Woodward very much on the comeback trail. He's back all square now with Oliver Shalnocki at 5-all over on table two. And these are the current standings in the world rankings, a new system that is in operation for the first time this year. They're accumulating points towards the first points-based official ranking positions at the end of the year. Shane Van Boning currently in the number one spot ahead of Alvin Ocean, who started the year at number one. David Alcady in third. Carlo Biado, the US Open champion, at number four. Jason Shaw alongside me here, playing for points throughout the year. How much of a consideration is all that, Jason? Because those rankings are going to determine a lot now. Once we have that points-based list at the end of the year, pretty much everything is going to be based on that, where you're seeded, what you get to play in. So how much, as we see Skylar Woodward here, levelling at 5-all, are the players thinking about all that at the moment? Yeah, there's still a long way to go. You know, there's still a lot of big events. I know we've had what, three or four Joshua now. Um, right so, yeah, all the players are 
definitely keeping their eye on the rankings and you want to try and accumulate as much points or prize money as possible to get yourself up there for next year. Yeah, getting into the elite events, getting into the Moscone Cup as well. It's all going to be determined almost entirely by those ranking positions. So that'll be something to keep an eye on throughout the year. How has this come up for Filler? It's actually a good break. It's just very unfortunate the, the five ball has come up and you can slightly see the one, but he can't do anything. So I think you're going to see him push out here, maybe try and tie the four ball up behind the six. And then he's going to come back to the table, probably hooked behind the three ball. So it's not an easy push out here, Michael. If I was Josh, I would be pushing out. Push out, though. Yeah, I'd probably hit the nine and leave it down here because you, you're going to either play safe after this and get behind the three. Imran Majid comes to the table, still in this, but knowing it's getting to the stage that, although 6 2 isn't unassailable, another couple of racks, and Filler would be getting to a situation where he can play without pressure, closing in on the winning line. So, got to make something happen soon. Try and bump the one off the rail in behind the five and the cue ball behind the three. And you hear it absolutely perfect. Yeah, nice shot there from Imran. Next couple of racks you feel are going to be very important for Imran to try and stay in this match. Make something happen. Skyler's flying on the other table though. He takes the lead 6-5 over Sean Nocky. Yeah, winner of that could play Shane Van Boning in the quarterfinals. I think given what Sean Nocky's done to SVB in the past, yeah, we'd rather not have to face him again. So Woodward 6-5 in front there. 7-4 for Alexa Peselge of Serbia against Karol Skaversky on table three. Yeah, I think this one ball goes. But not too sure how much he can get out of it to get onto the two. Now oh, he's got a really difficult shot here. He's jacked up over these two balls. This is a tester. I think he's got to try and hit down on this ball instead of trying to roll it. Extension, please. We saw Imran Majid on the main table earlier in the week on that loser side in an all British clash with Chris Melling. He won 9 6, but if you'd seen the way he played, you wouldn't have fancied he'd still be around for this stage. They were both really struggling. Came through another four rounds after that, finishing with a fine win over the former world champion, Torsten Homan. Good shot there from Imran. Yeah, that was very well struck. That was a very difficult shot. This ball and go two reels. No, he went one. Is he going to just pot this ball and go one reel straight back up? I, I, I'm sure the, the six ball passes the nine, Carl. Yeah, you can see there it just barely fits past it. He's having a little look now. Yeah, he's doing well here, he's in run. He's not had much opportunity in the match. He's kind of all been about filler, so he's just hanging in. He's, he's staying patient to the game and just hoping something happens where he can go on a bit of a mission. Well, he 
have to say when Imran Majid is getting to the table with chances. He's not letting them pass him by. Couldn't afford to let Joshua Filler get much further in front. And, and he stemmed the, the right. tide back to three behind. Filler's lead now six racks to three in the last 16 of the UK Open. If you want to make it, then you can take it, but you better get in the zone. Welcome back to last 16 action in the UK Open at the Copper Box Arena. And Skylar Woodward is pulling off a wonderful turnaround against Oliver Shelnocki, the rising young star from Hungary. Woodward on a real roll. Shelnocki dominated in the early stages, but the two-time Moscone Cup MVP is closing in here on a 7-5 lead. Shalnocki in his chair, looking a bit shell-shocked. Woodward, one of two Americans left in the draw. They could face each other in the quarterfinals. The other is world champion Shane Van Boning, who's yet to start his match against Mark Beisterbosch of the Netherlands. Back here on the main table, Imran Majid holding his own and back to 6-3 down. There you see Imran moved in, following Joshua's break. A wing ball straight in. Needs the one ball to bounce. Seven balls got in the way. So he has been watching. He moved his cue ball in there. He adjusted a little bit. Have you been speaking to Imran in the break, Jason? There. He would have loved to have seen a little bit of the one, but. Looks like he's going to go for a jump shot here, Carl. Very close. Yeah, this is 
He's got a bit of a distance. I'm kind of sat side on to the table from Combox, and the one is not as close to that top rail as it as we think. So, big key here is to get this cue ball landing so they don't fly off the table. Foul shot. Ball in hand. I think he jumped over the one ball. I think he jumped over the edge of it. Start the clock, please. Well, we'll tell from here. Well, I seem to take a hop just before it and maybe then jump over it. What a camera angle that is, by the way, the slow-mo there. It's amazing. You might see Josh shoot the one ball in the top right hand corner just so he can get down the table. He's looking to see if he can get down there past it. Yeah, I think he's okay. Make sure you get down to the bottom rail. Didn't achieve the success he was hoping for in 2021 in the very biggest events. Went out in the last 32 of the World Championship to Naoki Oi. Was sent to the loser side of the US Open by Lucius Yap. Did win a couple of matches as he tried to get back in and make it to the single elimination stage. One of those was against Skylar Woodward, who we've just seen. But was eventually dumped out of the loser side by Mieszko Fortunski. But still had plenty of success last year. Won the nine ball at the European Championship for the first time. Also won the first event when the Euro Tour resumed after the COVID suspension. And took the US Straight Pool Championship. So lots of success last year. Perhaps most notable of all, though, part of the Germany side that won the World Cup. Yeah, I'm sure he was delighted when he won that. Um, you know, Joshua was, was the, the leader in the team and his partner is someone who used to play a lot but doesn't play as much anymore. So I think with the partnership, I think that was a, a great achievement in itself. Yeah, Christoph Reinches was his partner last year. Ball in hand, plus Thank Joshua Filler usually equals end of rack. And it certainly did there. Once again, Filler leads by four at 7-3. Skylar Woodward stretching his lead over Oliver Shulnocki to 7-5. And there you can see that's the match on table three. Karol Skowerski against Alexa Peselge. Skowerski hanging in there. He's 7-5 down against Peselge, who will be playing at the World Cup for Serbia next month along with Andrea Klasovic. They played together last time out, but went out in the first round to Greece. And that is the last 16 picture, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz and Mario He, as well as David Alcady, all through in different ways earlier in the day. Woodward two ahead, Pacelge two ahead. We heard from Niels Fine a short time ago. He'll be starting shortly against Daniel Massiol and Shane Van Boning, the world champion, yet to get things underway against Fine's fellow Dutchman, Mark Beisterbosch. There is Pia Filler. Perfectly happy, I would suggest, with the way things are going here. She doesn't look it. <laughs> well, Thank you, I think 11. she's a bit of a perfectionist Joshua as well. To break. Leading seven, racks to three. But she'll have known against players experienced as Majid. Filler was unlikely to have things all his own way, but he's very much on top at 7-3. That break, he's definitely got it down. Moved in a little bit off the rail with his hand on the table, and uh, they definitely adjusted after the very first break Joshua did. And it seems to be paying off. Yeah, you could see the cue ball there jump back and pop up into the skies. That's what the players are trying to do when, the, when they break at nine ball. Get that cue ball popping. I don't know about that. I can't break. Well, you said it. The 
the balls have come out good here, haven't they? Just look at this. I have noticed since he's moved the cue ball in a little bit from the rail, that the same ball below the nine ball keeps going one rail straight into the top left corner. OK, the rack expert has said that, so the next rack. Let's pay attention, see if it happens again. Well, I don't think we're going to have to wait too long. An air of inevitability about what's coming next. Filler's been four clear twice before in this match. And both times, Majid has immediately reduced the gap. This time, though, it looks as though Filler's advantage will stretch to five. Yeah, and talking of five, Sean Lockie was 5-1 upright, Michael, over on table two. He now trails 8-5 to Woodward. Yeah, Skyler just Extension, three racks please. away now from the quarterfinals. Well, I have been keeping an eye on here. I can see right through the screens here, and I was watching. It was 5-5, five, five and Skyler broke off, and he made two or three balls, and he had a bank shot on the two ball, and he missed the bank. Nearly made the six ball, but left the two ball behind the nine. So, so Noki had to kick, and then I guess that's all he's done from there. So, it can be a cruel game at times. Well, with the winner breaks format, every mistake and the consequences of it can be magnified so greatly. Yeah, and if you can hear crunching of balls on your TV screens, that's actually SVB practicing. He's actually playing three ball right now. Yeah, there's eight practice tables kind of just to the left in this arena. and Well, Shane's the only player practicing at the minute. That's four That's run outs from the break so far in this match from Joshua Filler. And this is the biggest lead he's had yet. He's just three racks away from a place in the quarterfinals of the inaugural UK Open here in London. He now leads Imran Majid 8-3. Tell you what I've noticed as well. Every time Joshua pots a nine, Imran claps, sits in his chair and he claps. I'm not really sure what that's about. What, like he taps his knee? No, he proper claps. Really? Yeah, watch. If, if Filler wins another rack, of course. I think that's a fairly good bet. Let's have a look at table two. The other big story going on at the moment is the way Skyler Woodward has turned this around. Nice little flick This is there the end the of the 13th rack. He's really built so much momentum here. Oliver Shonoki. No clapping from him, but he is sitting in his chair a lot at the moment. Woodward closing in on victory as he looks for a place in the last eight. Now you'll see this break from Joshua here. Move the cue ball in a little bit. And I think it might be the six ball, Carl, that's going into the top left pocket where he's breaking from. OK. Eight racks to three. Shall we see again here? Oh, nine ball this time. He's been crunching the break his last four or five breaks. really hit them hard. Yeah, and he's controlling the cue ball well, but he got no shot on this one. Just try and play the one and get in behind the nine ball here. Yeah, the match on table three is really turning into a big battle, isn't it? Skorowski's on six and oh. Baselge's on seven. He's got away with that one there, Joshua. I think the cue ball's welded to the nine, but he's so very fortunate not to make the three ball too. Yeah, ideally would would have got the cue ball in right behind the nine, but he's touching that nine, so he's got the hook. Moran Majid has been a Moscone Cup player in the past, all the way back in 2006. 
in Rotterdam. The only time it's ever finished tied. Extension, please. I don't see any value here, Carl, in just trying to baby this. He's got to give this a good old whack. There's no, there's no way of soft kicking it and getting it safe. You could maybe try and do a soft kick to the side rail, but there's no value to it. Maybe trying to hit this ball hard and make it off the two on the side. Well, he was, he was hoping something was going to happen with the nine ball there, wasn't it? Key ball's going to be right behind the seven here, you feel. You might see him go for the bank here. Onto the red three. Yes. Hope for a little bit of luck too. Draw the cue ball off the off the back rail with spin. Trying to come back round to the middle of the table. Might even Extension. flick the nine ball. Yeah, I mean, the, the shot's on, but you would feel he's guaranteed to get this cue ball in behind yeah, the seven. Yeah, he's going to bank this ball. He's going to draw. Pretty amazing, the, the one stayed there like that, he hit it so pure. Yeah, look how hard he hit it, and it's still spinning there. <coughs> I like just banking the one ball back up the table here, and he, I think he thinks the one ball goes past the eight, Carl. If this goes in. get away with it no he's not so he decided to go out all out attack and it's not paid off well as we've said when Major has had his chances in this match he's generally taken them pretty well got to bring that to the fore here again yeah, really he couldn't ask for a much better chance from here than this yeah and he knows the break has been figured out a little bit as well, doesn't he? So I was surprised there at Filler. I thought he would have played safe. You know, just banked the one up and down the table and run the cue ball in behind the eight and the six. We've been playing race to nine for the first four days, but when it moves up to a race to 11, you always feel like it just offers one more comeback possibility, doesn't it, in, in a race to 11? You've still got a chance for a comeback here. Phyllis still needs three racks. Imran needs to win this rack and then try and break and run a couple just to to try and put a little bit of heat on Phyllis. Yeah. Oh, and just as you say that, and we've written the last rights for this rack, he's gone and done that. And that really is the biggest error he's made in the match. It could be the most significant. Yeah, that's unforgivable. That is a really bad miss there from Imran, and that for me is probably the end of the match. To be, to be fair, I think Filler will just go on from here and pick up more momentum. Well, put it this way, he's in needing a miracle territory now. Really, we've said it so many times in this match. The limited number of opportunities you'll get against Joshua Filler, you've got to make the most of them. He'd done that very effectively in this contest Joshua until that back. seven ball came along. And having left it over the pocket, Imran Majid knew what was coming next. Joshua Filler, six clear for the first time at 9-3.
if you want to make it, then you can take it, but you better get in the zone. Imran Majid won't be in a hurry to see this again, but let's have another look at that seven, which stopped him in his tracks just when it looked as though he was going to cling on and get back to 8-4. No wonder he needed a pep talk. I believe that's his wife he's talking to. Now trailing 9-3. Thank you, right, 13. But at least he was smiling about it. Wouldn't have had Gosh, massive expectations nine, coming right. into this match against the very much in form, recently crowned World Masters champion Joshua Filler. But he's really let the German off the hook there. Yeah, I think she must have been saying no tea for you tonight, Imran, after missing that seven ball. You're going to be sleeping on the couch tonight. You buck your ideas up, son, and you're on the couch. So now we know what goes on in your houses when you miss easy balls. Not that that ever happens. Well, not that easy anyway. Usually when you make a mistake like that, your opponent usually gets a nice easy out in the next game. You usually lose two wrecks, but he's back at the table and he has to try and come with something special here because there's not much on offer. i tell you who really is coming with something special is Skylar Woodward. His relentless march continues. And after that bad start that he had, he's now leading Oliver Shawnocki 9-5. And he's in a race with Filler to be the next one through. So the closest match going on at the moment is the one on table three. Alexa Pascells, the young Serbian, please. is now leading 8-6 against Karol Skowerski of Poland, who's 38 years of age, <coughs> won the World Masters 10 years ago this year, and also was part of the Poland team along with Wojciech Szewczyk that got to the final of the World Cup of Pool in 2012 before going down narrowly to Finland. He's going to try and kick the one ball here down behind the nine and the three and get the cue ball towards the six and the eight. He's hit it perfect. Very nice shot. Maybe Filler can see the edge. Wood was on the hill. 10 5 now. Extension, please. One extension allowed per rack, remember, from the 30 second shot clock. You can take it to 60, one time only. Small opportunity for him running now. Pop this one ball, I'm not saying he can get close to the two, but he can do something. He's got to keep Villa off ten. That's got to be the key goal now. You've used it. Well, can you believe that? He's time. called the extension. He's been reminded by Brendan Moore, a referee from Sheffield, that he had already used his extension. And although they're going to check us, the call at the moment is that he was out of time. Yeah, I think he was out of time there. It was beep, 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 just as he was going to strike the ball. Can I can't hear the beeps back. I'm sure, can you just ask him to check it in the truck? I'm pretty sure it was out of time, but I can't hear the beeps back. What do you think, guys? Well, can you believe yeah, that? He's called time. the extension. It He's been reminded. Time. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. absolutely yeah. conclusive. Brendan Moore, former bus driver, clock, and he has served a ticket on Imran Majid there. Well, Michael, I could just see him around looking at his wife again there and forget the couch, he might be in the shed. Two big mistakes there, two games in a row. Well, that's it. I mean, you play someone like Joshua Filler, you can take getting beaten, but what you can't take is beating yourself. And I think he's done it there to a certain extent. Yeah, and Imran's not 
really been seen on the TV table for a long time, so he's not really going to be used to the shot clock. And obviously, Jason, you've played a lot with it, and there's a certain way to manage it, isn't there? There's a certain skill to it, and he's just got lost in the moment. Yeah, you got to try and uh, use your time wisely. You know, you look up, kind of see where you're at to go and go into the table. If it's tough, you try and think quickly, and um, you know. If you have to use it, you use it, but you don't use your extension just because it's the first shot and you want to like think a little. You got to think down f three or four, three or four shots more ahead. You might need it. Yeah, and if you do use it, make sure you remember that you've used it. And it feels as though any hope for Imran Majid in this match has just gone out the window. Trying to run the cue ball through. He's trying to play a stun run through. And he's played a stun. So he's got a little thin one into the side. Cue ball run round off a few rails. Should still be okay. Mr. Woodward's got three balls left. To get to the quarterfinals. He was 5-1 down. Let's not forget. It's now 10-5. Three balls to make it through. Fuller makes a good pop there, and the cue ball looks good. He's about to go on the hill. Well, Joshua Fuller, the one shaking his head. And Imran Majid will probably be doing the same about Joshua that racket Fuller for a lap. long time to come. A real interlapse. He's gifted that one to Fuller. And he's now on the hill. From 6-3, he's pulled away to 10-3, and needs one more for a spot in the quarterfinals. Skylar Woodward is there already. Ten racks in a row against Oliver Shonoki from 5-1 down. The US Moscone Cup star is grinning away to himself there, and why not? He'll be absolutely delighted with that 11-5 win. He could now face Shane Van Boning in the quarterfinals. Let's have a look at how it all finished. Left with just the seven and the nine, all routine stuff. He's in the last eight. I think I think he broke and run at least six games there towards the end. The last he was down 5-4 and I was watching he missed a bank. The kid played a shot, kicked the ball, and the kid never got back to the table. So he put on a very, very good performance in the middle of the match. Or should I say, yeah, middle of the match. He was 4-1, 5-1 down. So very nice win and that's good confidence going forward for Skyler. So. Yep. He becomes the fourth player through to the quarterfinals. Will Joshua Filler be the fifth? Got a shot on the one ball. Cue ball looks like it's running into the three. All depends on where he's going to contact the three. Two balls still on the table. It's over on the long rail to the right hand side. down fairly quick is he going to try and kind of draw it off the three? Oh, that wasn't too bad he could just run it into the left side of the three so that's actually worked out okay needs a good shot here though he's got two options here you can either draw up in between the six and the nine or he can try and force follow two rails and go out past the eight back to the middle of the table oh he's tried He's tried to play that shot, but he's threw in a quick one, and he's left Imran a little chance here. Yeah, mark down the date and the time and the year, because it's not often you see that type of stroke from Joshua Filler. Maybe the adrenaline got a little better of him there, Carl. He's probably going to go down, but wants to go down swinging. He doesn't want that lapse with the extension and the shot clock to 
be his last memory of this match. He'd love to even just get another rack or two on the board. He's got away with it this time, but I'm sure we all agree we can just sense it's a case of when Joshua's going to win this match now. And not if. Kept his head well earlier in the match, Imran Majid. But I think that's a situation that's changed as we've come towards the business end. Filler makes this. Oh. Oh, I hit that unbelievable too. Yeah, how close was that? Well, Majid is the one smiling there. Filler's the one shaking his head. I think it should be the other way around, the way these have finished. Could see the cue ball land on the four ball there. Well, he can't see. It looks like he's having to kick real, real frost car. It looks like he can see the edge. Extension, please. No. I think he can massy it a little bit to make this. I'm not sure if real frost is necessary. Yeah, Phil has been quite fortunate not to leave something more straightforward. Yeah, I think this is the shot. This is better than going real, real frost. He's got a chance he can miss this real frost. And that looks very likely to be the end of that. Yeah, we've just seen America's Skyler Woodward win his match on table two. SVB's made his way over there, the current world champ. He's going to be playing Mark Beister Bosch, so it's going to be a good game over there too. Can Shane set up that all-American clash in the quarters? Four balls left for Filler, and he will be through to the quarterfinals as well. Yeah, it's been a pretty accomplished performance, really. Imran Majid hasn't helped himself towards the end of the match. But he can take some consolation from the fact that he wouldn't have been coming in with much expectation anyway. We'll see him again in the World Cup of Pool in a few weeks' time. He'll be paired up with Chris Melling for the Great Britain B team. And, of course... Majid can come away with the knowledge that he was the last British player left and the only one to make it through to the weekend. Yeah, I think overall Josh will be fairly happy, but he knows he's got to just tighten up a few things. It's the UK Open, but it's now closed to UK players in terms of pursuing the title because Imran Majid is out. Joshua Filler pulling away from 6-3 with five racks in a row. He beats Majid 11-3, and he's now just three wins away from becoming the first ever winner of this UK Open crown.